Hi, so this is a um, gel electrolyte polymer for um, batteries. Now I've done a couple of gel electrolyte polymers before and this one is actually one of the most simplest that I've come across. And it's based on patent number 5585208 and it's um, titled Alkaline Gel Electrolyte uh, for Electrochemical Cells if you want to look it up. Now it uses PVA. PVA actually stands for two things. Uh, one thing it stands for is polyvinyl alcohol, and the other is a related um, polymer, polyvinyl acetate. Now the stuff that you buy as white glue is usually a mixture of the both of them. It's usually about 60% polyvinyl acetate and 30% polyvinyl alcohol. And normally it's around about 50-55% by weight, um, solids to liquid. And that's exactly what we've got here in this builder's PVA, and that's what we're going to be using. Um, mostly because it's not amazingly critical. The uh, concentration of PVA that you need, it can either be polyvinyl alcohol or polyvinyl acetate or a mixture of the two and the concentration in the electrolyte is somewhere between 1 and 20%. The best results apparently are sort of between um, 5 and 10%. So really not very critical. And when you're actually making batteries, what you're going to need to do is experiment with that and experiment with the um, kind of percentages that would give you a good result. Now I'm going to make up a um, standard solution, if you like, a standard gel electrolyte that really you would modify for your particular battery that you wanted to make. Uh, I'm still poorly, incidentally, hence the hoarse voice, so I apologise for that. Now, there are only two components. One is the PVA, and the other is the alkali. And in the patent, he uses one of two alkalis, um, sodium hydroxide or potassium hydroxide. Now, the sodium hydroxide is really, really easy to get hold of. It's just drain cleaner. Um, I'm going to use potassium hydroxide, specifically because potassium hydroxide is used in um, nickel iron batteries. And I have you know, I have quite an interest in nickel iron batteries. Now the percentage of hydroxide, whether it's sodium or potassium that you use, is 30% by uh, weight in water. So I've got 50 millilitres of water here, so I've weighed out 50 grams of flake potassium hydroxide. And all you do is add the potassium hydroxide to the water. Now you don't want to chuck it in all at once, because um, whether it's sodium or potassium hydroxide, it reacts um, quite strongly with water and gets quite hot. So if you chuck all of that in there, you'll make that boil, and you don't want to do that. So you add a little bit, get it to dissolve, add a little bit, get it to dissolve. And that's quite a con strong concentration. Um, so you will notice the gloves. You don't want to get this on anything, because it will dissolve uh, most organics, like carpets, wood surfaces, your skin, very quickly indeed, and you don't want that to happen. Now the um, hydroxide all goes into the water until it's dissolved and the ratio that you want is 1 to 1. So we're going to end up with 50 millilitres of our potassium hydroxide 30% solution. So we want 50 millilitres of our PVA solution. Now as I said before, this round about 50 to 55%. So it's far too strong, so we need to water that down a bit. And you water it down just um, like this with deionized water to make up 50 millilitres. So if this is 55%, and I want around about a 20% concentration, then I want about um, 20 millilitres of this and 30 millilitres of deionized water. Again, they're not going to be exact, but you really don't need to worry too much about it. Don't get too fanatical about it. You need to get it round about there. And then play around with it, depending on your source of PVA, um, whether you're using wood glue, white glue, school glue, uh, cemento, render bond, whatever your source of PVA is, you're going to have to um, play around to get the best concentrations that you can in order to make this work properly. Oh, that's dissolving nicely, let's add a little bit more in. We've added our um, 20 mil of uh, PVA and 30 ml of deionized water to get that solution and we've got our 30% by weight solution of um, potassium hydroxide in 500 ml of deionized water and you have to be careful with this one it is very caustic now what we do is add the potassium hydroxide 
to the PVA drop-wise while stirring. And you keep on doing that, stirring all the time until you've added all of the hydroxide to the PVA. Obviously an awful lot easier if you actually have a stirring. So having done that, what we end up with is this um, milk coloured solution. Now what you have to do with that is cast it. And you cast it quite simply by pouring it onto some kind of surface. And here I'm using a plate. So I pour it onto a surface and leave that to dry and that will evaporate away until it forms a semi-solid gel-like film. And what it's like after it's had a chance to dry into a film. Now you can put this into an oven between 50 and 80 degrees centigrade which is exactly what I did with it in order to get me my film. And there it is. So that is my solid gel electrolyte polymer film. And I can cut that now into whatever shape I want to form my battery separator. Now I've made this actually quite thick. That's about two millimeters thick. And it really needs to be in the region of 100 to 200 um, micrometers thick. So I made it quite thick. Uh, in order to be able to see it, what you really want to do when you cast it is just cast it as a thin um, sheet, then let it dry, and then you can cut it once it forms this solid film. And it's kind of quite wet, and it's got a high concentration of potassium hydroxide, but as you can see, I'm poking it with my finger quite happily, so it's much, much safer than uh, a liquid, and it doesn't go anywhere, and that is your polymer electrolyte. Now there are other things you can do with this. Um, you can add 20% of polyvinyl pyrrole up to uh, 10,000 molecular weight um, and that will help strengthen up a bit and actually help with its um, conductivity. As would adding uh, titanium dioxide, so either PVP or titanium dioxide at about 20% before you dry it into the film will actually help improve it a little bit as well. So there you go, a um, solid gel film electrolyte that you can use for making batteries. Anyway, I hope that was of interest to you and I hope you found it useful. Thank you very much.